Good morning, friends. Welcome back to our children's ministry time together this morning. Pastor Zach, so excited to be back with you. Before we get started this morning, why don't we take a minute and pray? Lord, we come to you now and in this, this time of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given to us. We thank you for sending Jesus to save us. And now that we are into the Christmas season, Lord, and we get to celebrate the birth of your son, I pray that we would just find time to celebrate and, and remember the true meaning of Christmas. Lord, we love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> I hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving this week. I hope that you were able to be with some family and eat way too much and just enjoy uh, time together. Uh, one of my favorite things about Thanksgiving, especially growing up, my, my family would all get together at grandma's house. We'd get there early. We would watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade. We would eat lunch right at noon as football was starting. We would eat, watch football, take a nap. When we woke up from our nap, we would eat again. Always one of my favorite days. And we'd usually go outside and, and play some backyard football. Um, so I hope that you guys have some awesome Thanksgiving traditions and that you were able to enjoy Thanksgiving um, on Thursday or whenever you celebrate it. It doesn't have to be uh, on Thanksgiving Day. Um, now <clears throat> we are moving into Christmas. Um, Christmas is such a great time of year. There's so much cheer and joy, and we get to celebrate Jesus being born, which is awesome. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about Christmas in a couple of weeks. So today is actually going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, we're going to do a different video today, um, as uh, many of you remember or last week our kids were in worship service so we didn't have a we didn't have the time back in the back in the youth room so today's video is to make sure that we're all on the same spot same page moving forward there is um, this this great uh, group of people uh, called the Bible Project and what the Bible Project is is people who make they make these really cool videos and they have these series on on the Bible and you can walk they have it where you can walk through the Bible they have videos for every single book in the Bible and they explain what happens in each book of the Bible but today so I have my Bible open here the video that we're gonna watch is all about the gospel and the Gospels. So, if you were to open your Bible, the New Testament is where we're going to be. The first four books are what we call the Gospels. And those books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all four of these books tell the story of Jesus, but they all tell it in a different way. Many of them have the same stories, but they share it in a different way. The word gospel translated literally means good news. So these four men, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell us about the good news of Jesus. Luke, who was a doctor, call him Dr. Luke, also wrote the book of Acts, which is what the apostles did after Jesus ascended into heaven. And that's where we are at in our in our study as we do the Gospel Project. But I wanted to change it up just a little bit today. So, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the Gospels. That is the New Testament. So, if you remember, as we've gone through the Gospel Project, the Old Testament, we have the Old Law, we have the Old, the old Things. In the New Testament, it's all about the New Law, and that is Jesus. And if you think back to Old Testament times, people had to make sacrifices. They had to sacrifice an animal for their sins. 
Well, when Jesus came and sacrificed himself for us, we don't have to do that anymore. What we have to do now is put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. And when we do that, we can be saved. And it's the only way that we can be saved. John chapter 14, verse 6. John writes, Jesus answered them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so, I want you guys to just know that's the good news. The gospel is good news. And we should be excited to share it with people wherever we are at. Okay, I want to tell you a story before we watch our video. I want to tell you a story that happened in my life just a couple of weeks ago. So, I am a big fan of chicken wings. I love wings. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings is one of my favorite places to go if there's big game on to watch with a lot of people. Uh, but I had an email for free wings from Applebee's. So I went to Applebee's and I got my free wings. And I'm going to admit something to all of you guys. I want you to know this. I have been a fan of professional wrestling of the WWE since I was in like fourth grade. I've loved it. I love the storytelling and everything that goes into it. Okay, it's, it's uh, my, my buddies in Missouri, especially my buddy Jordan and my buddy Keelan, we always say it's the greatest soap opera on TV that you can actually go to and watch in person. And I have. Um, I've gone s s many times, not many, a few times uh, to watch WWE in person. And it's a lot of fun to be around people who enjoy the same thing you do. But here's my story. So as I'm getting up to leave from Applebee's, I hear this conversation with some people in the restaurant and a waitress. And they're talking about some WWE superstars, some, some performers, and they couldn't remember one of the people's names. And so I kind of just chimed in and said, oh, you're talking about this person. They said, yeah, that's exactly who we're talking about. And so I was able, with that, I, able, I was able to walk over, introduce myself. We had about a 25 minute conversation. And within that conversation, I got to share the gospel with these people at Applebee's because I found a connection with them with WWE. And so it was awesome. It was so cool to see how you can take a connection that has what you would say nothing to do with Jesus and you're able to turn it into a conversation about Jesus. That's something that I, I thank God that he has blessed me with. And that's the ability to have a connection with pretty much anyone I meet. I can find something in common with them. And when you have that common ground, just like I did at Applebee's, then you have your way to share the gospel. Um, and I just wanted to encourage you guys. That was such a cool story. And it's a little thing. Uh, but with that, I was able to share the gospel. I was able to invite them to church. And uh, hopefully we'll see them at church soon. So, as we're talking about the gospel, and, and the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, why don't we watch this video to see exactly what the gospels represent? There are four books in the Bible that are ancient biographies of Jesus. The gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And while individual stories about Jesus and his teachings are familiar to many people, these books have way more to offer if we read them from beginning to end and see how they connect Jesus' story into the overall biblical storyline. So let's talk about how to read the gospel. First of all, this word gospel, what does it mean? Well, it means good news. Which raises the question, good news about what? Well, in Mark's gospel, Jesus enters the story announcing that the time is fulfilled. God's kingdom has come near, so turn around and trust this good news. So the good news is about God's kingdom arriving, but what does that mean? Well, it's Jesus' way of summarizing the whole biblical story that leads up to himself. The whole story. Okay, give me the short version. 
Well, the story begins with God creating a good world and then appointing humanity as his representatives to rule it. But then the humans rebel over and over, leading to a world of violence and death. That's a problem. But God's committed to making it work. So he chooses Abraham and his family to restart the project. Then through Moses, God brings the family into a garden land of abundance so that he can restore all of the nations through them. Right, Israel becomes a kingdom with amazing kings like David, but eventually Israel rebels too, and it leads them into destruction. But Israel's prophets said that God wasn't giving up. He was going to personally come and restore Israel so that his justice and peace could spread to all nations and to all creation. This hope was called the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus said he was bringing to Israel. Yes, Jesus' good news is about God's kingdom, the new creation that was arriving to restore humanity to their role as God's partners in ruling the world. This is why the gospel has so many stories about Jesus liberating people from death and disease, along with all of his teachings about generosity to the poor or forgiveness and loving your enemies. He was inviting people to live in God's new world. Exactly. And so this is one of the main goals of the gospel, to show how Jesus is bringing the whole biblical story to its fulfillment. So that's why the gospel authors are constantly appealing to the Hebrew scriptures while telling the story of Jesus. Yeah, like when Jesus is born in Bethlehem, Matthew reminds us that this was anticipated by the prophet Micah. And he directly quotes from Micah. Yeah, these direct quotes are really common. But more often, the gospel authors weave biblical phrases into the story without telling you, so you can discover it for yourself. Like when Jesus is baptized and God announces from the skies, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now, if you do some digging, you'll find that God's statement blends together phrases from three biblical texts to identify Jesus as the royal son of David, the seed of Abraham, and the servant who's going to suffer for the sins of his people. Whoa, that is subtle. Yes, and the gospel accounts do this on every page. Every book is constantly showing how all of the biblical stories about Abraham or Moses and David and all the prophets, all of it points forward to Jesus. Now, why are there four different accounts? Wouldn't one be enough? Well, the diversity is on purpose. Each of the four gospel authors has shaped and arranged their stories about Jesus differently, so they can emphasize different things about him. Matthew presents Jesus as a greater Moses, and so he's grouped Jesus' teachings into five large blocks, just like the five books of the Torah. Luke highlights how Jesus is God's royal servant from the book of Isaiah, who brings God's light to the nations. Mark presents Jesus as a new start for humanity, bringing the mystery of God's new creation crashing into the present. And John focuses on Jesus' claim to be Yahweh, the God of Israel, become human, to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. Those are really different from each other, but they all tell the same basic story. A man from the region of Galilee teaching this good news but who's ultimately crucified as a criminal. Yes, all four books of the gospel are showing how the arrival of God's kingdom through Jesus led him up to the cross, where he was enthroned as the king of God's new world. He's given a robe, a crown, and a scepter. Right. And as Jesus suffers the consequences of humanity's rebellion, he's showing that the power of God's kingdom comes through his love and self-sacrifice. And when he's raised from the dead, we're watching the dawn of the new creation. So the gospel authors don't just want their readers to know about the good news of God's kingdom. They want them to become a part of it. Yes, the gospel is designed to persuade us to trust and follow Jesus so that we can participate in the new creation that he began. I love it. I love these videos that the Bible Project puts out. The way that they are able to show us 
what the Gospels are. Uh, I would encourage you, if you want to, to learn more about, there are so many topics they have covered, but if you want to learn more about anything, or if you want to learn about a certain book in the Bible, go to thebibleproject.com, and you're able to see all the videos. All this stuff is free. Um, you can do that. I would encourage you to jump in and find the Luke and Acts series as we're going through the book of Acts on Sunday mornings with um, seeing everything with the first church and, and how it, it the mission began. And so that would be a great place to go and watch the videos and learn a little bit more about the book of Acts and what what the apostles did. Jesus came. He, he came to this earth. He lived as a man. He died for us. And then he rose again. And he's in heaven. And one day he's going to come back for us. And I've been excited many times in my life, but I can't wait for that day. That day is going to be the biggest celebration that we've ever had. And that day, when you have put your faith and hope in Jesus, then He's going he's gonna to come back and take us to heaven. And that's what the gospel is all about, is showing people this is, <clears throat> this is what happens before Jesus, this is what happens with Jesus. We, on our own, cannot survive. We, on our own, cannot make it without Jesus. With Jesus, we can and I know many of you know this verse, Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if you read the context of that verse, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Philippians, but he's writing from prison. And Paul says these things, but he also, let me just turn to Philippians 4 so I can, I can read some of it to you, because I think it's an incredible story. But what's awesome is that through it all, Paul's ups and downs, he shares the good news of Jesus. And when Jesus is in our life, we should want to share. The best form of advertising is word of mouth. And if you were in church on Sunday or if you were at home and you were able to listen to Pastor Ron's sermon, he talked about this on Sunday about how when we are excited about something, we share it. And, and he used an example of when your favorite football team wins a game, you get excited and you want to you wanna tell people, hey, look, my team won. That's how we should be with Jesus. When Jesus changes your life, we should be excited about that. We should say, hey, let me tell you what Jesus has done in my life. Let me show you what this from my own experience, when you are living for Jesus, people will see it and they'll say, whoa, what does Zach have? Because I want that. They'll see it in your actions. They'll see it in your words. They'll see it in how you treat people. So I want to jump to, to Philippians 4 because I want to share just this little bit with you. So starting in verse 10, Paul says this, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, but I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or an empty, plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. What I love about this is that Paul has had it all. He has had nothing. But he's always focused on Jesus. And that is, is how we should be. That's the gospel. Knowing that no matter how low our day might be, or how sad we might be, how upset, Jesus is walking with us. And it's our, it's our duty, 
It's our job to share the gospel with other people. Because if we don't, who will? We, and I want you guys to hear this, we might be the only Bible that someone ever has. And that's crazy to think about living here in America. But there are people all over the world who have never heard about Jesus. And if we don't share Jesus with people, who will? And I want you to know that when you share Jesus with someone, they may not accept it. They may ignore you. They may not want to talk to you. That's okay. Jesus doesn't call us to convert people to Christianity. He doesn't call us to make them change their ways. He calls us to plant the seed. And what's cool is that we never know the impact that we have. And we may never know the impact we had until we get to heaven. But when we share the gospel with people and we tell them what Jesus has done in our life, we plant that seed. And we may plant that seed over here when they're 10 years old. And they may not, they may not understand it until over here when they're 30 years old. And you may never know that you were the first person to tell them. But when someone tells them over here and it clicks, guess what? When they get to heaven, you'll be there to welcome them because you shared Jesus with them. You shared Christ's love with them. And, I mean, that is awesome. Uh, And we think about people that, think about people in your life right now who have shared the gospel with you, okay? The two most influential people in my life, outside of my family, my youth pastor, Randy Graham, and my freshman and sophomore of high school, Sunday school teacher, Alan Fisher. Those two men poured into my life. And because of what they've done, I get to pour into people now. My grandma, my mom, my aunt, they've poured into me. But what's cool is the people that poured into them will be a part of my story. Because the people that poured into my mom and my grandma and my aunt, then my mom and my my grandma and my aunt poured into me. And now I get to pour into other people because that's what Jesus has done in my life. I just want to share a story with you, and and this, I want you to know this is not a story for me to say, hey, look, like, I'm awesome, but this story just reminds me how good God is, and and how I, I never know the impact of what I'm doing, or what God is doing through me. So growing up, especially when I was in high school, I had these two boys that I used to babysit, Zachary and Nicholas. We called him Nico. Still call him Nico. He actually just graduated college, which is crazy, and Zachary just got married. I feel very old even talking about that. But let me tell you this. Um, Zachary and Nico's mom and dad, two of my favorite people in the whole world, and actually um, their mama, Susan, was my seventh grade geography teacher. She was so much more than that. Anyway, That's beside the point. I just loved Nico, and I I do. Nico and Zachary both. And I just wanted to pour into them and pour into them. Christmas Eve, and this was many years ago, Nicholas decided that he wanted to follow Jesus. It was awesome. So our Christmas Eve service, I just remember being so excited for him. Well, at my church... First Baptist Church in Lamar, Missouri, where I grew up, <clears throat> when someone made a decision to follow Christ, we would always ask them and their family to either stand at the back door or sometimes up front so everyone could come by and, and say, you know, something encouraging, give them a hug, whatever. And I remember walking through that line, and I got to Nico, and I gave him a big hug, told him I was proud of him. His mom looked at me with tears in her eyes, And she said, he made this decision to follow Jesus 
because of people like you, because of the impact that you've had on his life. And I just remember like, I, I get emotional just thinking about it because I never thought about it that way. I just wanted to love on him and, and on Zachary, um, knowing that I had a small impact like that has given me encouragement every day since then to continue sharing what Jesus has done in my life with people. And, you know, when when Alan and Randy poured into me in high school and in middle school, I got to, I'm the beneficiary of what they did. And my motto for my life since I was probably 14 years old has been simply to love God, to love people, and to change the world. And you can't do number three without the first two. Love God, love people, change the world. That's all I want to do. And if God allows me, He uses me to have just a small impact on someone's spiritual journey, that's awesome. And um, I want all of you guys to know that's why I am in ministry because I had people pour into my life raise me up in the faith, help me every day, walk beside me. That's why I want to be the best resource that I can for all of you. I want to I want to answer any questions. I want to pray with you. You know, once COVID is over, I want to give you the biggest hug that I can because honestly, those are like my favorite things on Sunday mornings are your hugs and your smiles, your fist bumps, all of that. But I don't do it at all for me and I pray that when you guys see me you see Jesus because I want him to be the number one thing in my life and my life I hope is a reflection of him so I know today was a little different and I just want you guys to know the gospel is so important and when you have good news you want to share it so as Jesus works in your life Share what he's doing with people. Share what he's doing with your brothers and sisters. Share what he's doing with your parents, your grandparents, anyone. Why don't we pray, and then we'll wrap up for this morning. Lord, I come to you now, and I'm just humbled thinking about the ways that you can use us, the ways that we may not think about, but we know that you have a plan Lord, and I pray that when we have the good news of, of Jesus and the good news of salvation, that we would share it with people, that we wouldn't hold it to ourselves, that we would take those, those leaps of faith and let people know just how much you do and, and how big you are. God, I pray now as we enter into the Christmas season that we would all take time to reflect and remember that Christmas is about the birth of your son, Jesus. And that's what we should celebrate. Lord, we're going to give you the praise and the glory for everything that you do. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, so next week we'll jump back in to where we were at in the book of Acts. Uh, I just want you guys to know I love you. And uh, I miss seeing you in person. And I pray that during this holiday, this Christmas season, we could all find joy and we could share what Jesus is doing in our lives with someone. I'll see you guys next Sunday morning. Have a great week.